Having worked in the blue collar world since I was able to work versus a mechanic, then as an electrician, there are certain things that you have to have, right? And I mean, like, it's gonna change for everybody, so I don't wanna paint it with too broad of a brush, but there are certain things that I certainly couldn't live without. Welcome, I'm Carl Murawski, this is the channel that helps you own better, look better, and live better. I love looking at people's EDC. A person's everyday carry will tell you so much about them, what they value, what they need every single day, what their life is like, and oftentimes about their preferences and who they are as a person. And as a guy who's worked in the field, in the trenches, on the railroad, in finished buildings, unfinished buildings, towed cars, you name it, my EDC has changed quite a bit, especially when it comes to work. So let's just jump right into it. The first thing is a good pair of safety glasses. Your company is required to buy you PPE, personal protective equipment, right? The thing is that a lot of times they'll buy the cheapest stuff that they possibly can while still remaining in compliance. So one of the best things that I ever did was I bought myself a pair of good safety glasses. Here are two pairs that, that are kind of, this is more or less what your company is gonna provide you. You know, they're tinted, they're plastic, they are Z87 plus rated, so they'll stop something from flinging into your eye. That's what they're there for. But when it comes to optics, when you look through these, they're, they're really wavy, you know what I mean? And, and I know we're not doing anything like, you know, viewing movies or anything like that, but you know, when you turn, you can see everything kind of ripple across them because again, I mean, they're just really meant to stop something from hitting you in the eye. However, we were doing a job outside and uh, I was like, you know what? The sun is killing me. These don't do much except for kind of dim the sun. I bought myself a pair of Crossfire polarized glasses. They weren't that expensive. They were like 35 bucks, but they made a huge difference because polarizing actually, if you know what polarizing does, it kind of changes the rays by um, using, you know, more or less like slats that you look through. There's also how you can, you know, if you have fishing glasses, they kind of do the same thing by producing or by eliminating the glare off the water. They make a huge difference, way clearer, way better. And those were the cheap ones. You can get stuff that's really expensive. I know there's another company out there. They make some really funky looking ones. I'll put them on the screen here, but get yourself a good pair that you take care of that will last you a long time. I actually still have those polarized safety glasses. Now, luckily I haven't had to worry about anything hitting me in the eye and damaging the lens, but I will tell you that my day is a little bit better because I actually have something that I can look through instead of one of these. Now, I always still have these because if one of those, you know, that, that does break or whatever, I can go back to the old standby and still be protected. But uh, getting your own PPE, if you're not satisfied with the stuff that your company is providing you, makes a big difference. And I don't think it's anywhere better than in your safety glasses. Number two is a good tape measure. Now, it's gonna depend on what you do, right? A lot of times, if you're, if you're a carpenter, you're using tape measures a lot more than us electricians are. However, for my job now, if I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go, you know, check out a, a job and, and maybe do a layout or just give an estimate or, or whatever it is, you're gonna need to know distances. This right here is kind of the backbone of construction no matter what you do. Now here I have an old Stanley Power Lock. I like the classics. This thing works really well. Now the Fat Max definitely stands out further. So if you're gonna measure something out, you can, and it's um, you know it's a lot easier to do layout that way. So these things are great, but I will tell you that I found something that's even better. And that would be a laser tape measure. Now this is from Bosch. I know almost every company makes these now. I have found though that usually the more expensive they are, the more accurate they are further away. Something like this, I mean, let's face it, you're not gonna do trim with this. You're not gonna go and, and do anything that's really crucial. But when it comes to general layouts, okay, I need, to, like, the, for the other day, I was, I was in a utility room of a hospital. I needed to know how far away a panel was and there was all kinds of junk in the way. To try to do it with the old standby Stanley here would have been kind of a pain in the neck. However, this, I can easily boop, hit, you know, and it even could do calculations inside of it. Depending on how fancy the one you get, this is sort of like a mid-tier. Um, you can you can do area, you can do all kinds of stuff with these. It's also a lot lighter than the than the uh, a regular old tape measure, especially if you get like a 35 or something that's a little bit longer. And I've just found that these these are are a lot better. And I think this is what we're we're seeing now is the technology is going so far that it, it's just making our job so much better. So whether it's a Bosch or a Klein or a, a, a Dewalt, I don't think it really matters. But I will say that this has definitely changed my mind as far as measuring goes. And now I still have these. These are great to know how to use and how to read a tape measure. But if you're looking at ease of use and daily carry, one of these that's the way to go. 
Up next is kind of a carryover from my normal EDC, and that's a good cotton bandana. Now, this is just a regular cotton one here. In the winter time, though, I'll often bring one of these with me, and this one here is from Dragonware. This is more or less, I've seen them called a couple of different things. I've seen them called buffs. I've seen them called, uh, I don't know, neck gaiters or whatever. More or less what they are, is just a round piece of fabric. And the nice thing about this is that you could put it on, you could wear it on your neck if you have to. Let's say you're doing something where you know, you don't necessarily want to breathe in whatever is there. You can kind of pull it up as a, a quick first line of defense. It'll never replace a respirator. But um, and then finally, you could always wear it on your head if you wanted to. And these things are so useful. I will tell you this. I have used my bandana as a a quick bandage plenty of times because you could just take it, fold it in half, wrap it around your hand, which just tends to be where I cut myself. Um, one time I actually caught myself with a band uh, with a bandsaw right there. Uh, stop the bleeding, was able to kind of go over and, you know, get first aid and stuff like that. This thing has also saved my butt when I had to work outside. Now, guy like me, I don't have a whole lot of hair. And there are certain times when you're working on jobs, residential or places where they don't require a hard hat, okay? So I was outside and we had to do some exterior wall packs. So we're putting a, a extension ladder up against the building, going up doing wall packs. The thing is when the sun came around, it was hitting us hard and I could feel myself getting sunburned. Luckily, I had an emergency head covering that I could put on. So I put that over the top of my head. I was able to cover my neck, the back of my head and not get too burned that day. The use for these is, is just, it, it doesn't stop. When it, you need a rag, if you need something to grab something that's hot, uh, I mean, any number of things. And the great thing is that they're cheap. They sit in your back pocket. You don't even know they're there until you absolutely need it. And then you pull it out. You will put one of these in your back pocket and I guarantee you, you will use it way more than you ever thought you would. One step above that is something like this. I believe this is also fire rated. It has all the OSHA stuff in here. I'm not going to waste your time talking about that, but you know, something like this, I, if it's FR rated or whatever, um, you can get by with something like this if cotton isn't quite your thing. But either way, Something like this on your person at all times really helps. Even if it's just, if you're a slob like me and you spill coffee down the front of you, well, at least you have something you can kind of clean it up with. One of those things is so valuable. Next up is a blade of some sort. Now, back in the day, maybe they would carry something like this. Now, this is the old Stanley 199. I am not old enough to have carried one of these. I have it because I think they're cool. Um, now that doesn't have a retractable blade on it. This is sort of like the old school, what you would carry. And I, I, I love it. I just think it's neat because it's ornate made in the USA. You know, this is, this is the old school kind of stuff. What I prefer to carry is I like these because they are, they're high vis and all that stuff. So if I drop it, I can see it. A lot of times I'll even put like a little thing on the back here, like a little loop of paracord or something so I can grab it really easily. The only issue with these, it's hard to change the blades out, but I found that the ones with the quick release, a lot of times I lose the blades. The other good thing about these is that that little point there, you can definitely use that to kind of, you know, if you have to remove some sheetrock or something and you have nothing else on you, you could score it and knock it out and then you're good with that. Now this is fine, but is this something you're gonna keep in your pocket? Maybe not. And for you guys who don't wanna carry something like this, this is maybe the best little tool that I've found recently. Now this I don't think is a, uh, you know, a patented design or thing like that, more or less what it does is it holds a utility blade in the smallest, thinnest package that I've ever seen. Now, this one here is from Big Idea Design. This basically will clip like your, your knife would clip on the inside of your pocket, and it just sits there. And when you need it, you pull it out, you have a disposable, replaceable blade that you can use to cut whatever you want, and then you put it back in. I cannot believe how much thinner and, and, and I mean like, it's crazy how much smaller this is. Now, does this have all the function of this? No. I mean, if you're gonna be doing cutting all day, every day, and you need something that you could put your whole hand around to be able to cut, I mean, you're cutting carpet or something like that, you're gonna want something like this, something that's dedicated. But if you're a guy who just cuts occasionally and you don't wanna use your nice, you know, tactical folder or something like that, this guy right here, these utility blade pocket knives are, in, they're amazing. Now it comes with this little tri-blade thing on here, which I think is actually used for like a fork in some situations, which I've also forgotten my fork on occasion. But I have yet to meet somebody who doesn't occasionally need a good cutting tool. Whether it is something like a dedicated utility knife or something like a pocket knife that you can keep or something like this, I think that uh, you, you really are gonna be going out there naked if you don't have something that you can cut things with.
Next is kind of a twofer, and that is a decent pocket notebook. I know what you're gonna say, I have notes on my phone. Yeah, sure you do. It's really difficult though, to draw something out and show somebody what you're talking about, uh, like a diagram or something like that on a phone. It's not impossible, but it's a heck of a lot easier with something like this. You can also tear out a page and give it to them, like if you're gonna give the apprentice maybe your coffee list that you have to go and get, uh, whatever it is, okay? Now, a couple of different things you could do here. You can get these kind of right in the rain type of, this is like a generic right in the rain from Field Book, which I think is sort of a knockoff of Field Notes that you can get on Amazon. However, it's still really just fine. And same thing with these these pages here. They don't actually soak up any water, so they're, they're somehow, I don't know what they did. They're made out of nylon or something like that, but you can mark on them with almost every pen that you can imagine, and, and they, they work just fine. So I, I bought it, it's like a six pack of these. And the great thing about them is that they sit in your pocket if you want to. And you know, this is okay, but I'll tell you, this right here is the king. Now these guys are cheap. They are so damn, there's nothing that I can think of that's as handy and cheap as these. Now the nice thing about these is that one side is grid and then the other side is lined. So you can make a list of material that you need over here or you can do a layout on this side. It also comes with a whole bunch of formulas and stuff that you might need in the back here. So if you need a formula, um, you know, for benching or shoring or whatever. I th actually, I think that's in the front here. Benching and shoring, your calculations there. I think you have a little bit of trigonometry on this side, really quick reference. And I've seen a lot of guys who keep these in the back pocket of their pants. And I know that sounds like, it looks like a lot to keep back there. But actually over time, they bend and they sort of mold to your back pocket. And this was very, very, very useful when we were doing railroad stuff because you're able to mark you know, your your distance, where something was when you had an obstruction. We have several like volumes of these that we've kept. The other thing is a lot of times what you can do is when you're done with a layout and you're finished with one of these, let's say the job, you can mark it with that job number and kind of keep it for your record. So a lot of times guys who do dirt work or things like that will have these and as a reference to go back to a job, perhaps. So they'll ask their foreman to make very, very detailed notes and have one of these with them. Is this something that you need with you all the time? Maybe not. And if you don't, then something like this might be just fine. But having something to write on is really important. And that brings me to my next one, something to write with, a good EDC pen. Now, don't go and get something that you're really gonna cry about if you lose it. Fisher Space Pen makes a great one. This one here, I believe, is from Good, what is it? Good Company or Good Man or Great Man or something. I can't remember, but it's great. I prefer the ones that you click. The ones that you have to spin just require two hands, and that's a lot more difficult when you're holding something and then you wanna you know, write on it, you can with one hand. That makes a big difference to me. This is super lightweight. I think it's aluminum. And again, it's small, fits in your pocket, and you don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. When you're talking about this stuff, it, the more easy it is to carry with you, the more likely you are to carry it. Finally, a good flashlight. And now when I began working, this is what we would use. This is the Maglite Mini. We would get these from the Snap-on guy and uh, you would just use them until they broke. And this one here was my old one from when I was a mechanic. This was essential. When you're looking down into the bay of an engine or you're looking up underneath or whatever, just to be able to illuminate the darkness makes all the difference. You can't go under there blind. Now, this is antiquated. I'm not even sure if you can get these anymore, and if you can, I'm sure they're LED. These old ones though, if you're old like me and you remember this, they actually had a second bulb in the tail cap. So you pull this little spring out. I can see that I've already used that bulb. And uh, this had a second bulb. So oftentimes when you were looking down, you know, you drop it and then it stopped working and you go, damn, I had I busted the bulb. But you can see that this thing has a lot of patina on it. It's definitely seen better days. Now this is old school, just like this is old school, right? So modern day, this was the one that I bought to replace it. This does not exist anymore. This is from the company Phoenix. This is their old TK12. It still works great. Now I replaced this with this. This doesn't work anymore. This stopped working a long time ago. This one still works. Now, since this doesn't exist anymore, and you know, it's a nice bright flashlight. I think that it was 270 lumens or something like that. I ended up replacing it with the modern version of it. Now. Uh, Phoenix has just worked for me. I've also tried Olight. I've tried a couple of different companies through night, I think. Um, Phoenix just is the one I tend to go back with because uh, again, they, they seem to just work, which I love. Now this one here, this is the Phoenix PD25R. It's brighter, it's smaller, it's 
easier to charge. This is just like a USB-C chargeable light, um, has several different modes on it, and it just works. I mean, it's, you can tell, that's even brighter than the last, oh, that's even brighter than this one, you know? And it's, it has this cool like two-way clip on it. You wanna put that on the brim of your hat or your hard hat, you absolutely can. And just the ability to put this anywhere it makes a big difference. We've come so far from this old mag light to these kind of like tactical sort of cop lights to this, it, it's unbelievable. And now keeping this with me, um, makes all the difference in the world. So what we kind of have in front of us here is the old school, right? So you have your old flashlight, tape measure, utility knife. This is what you would have carried probably since, you know, the 1960s, right? But in the modern day, things have gotten a lot smaller. They've gotten a lot neater and also uh, easier to use. I mean, just this right here in weight, the weight savings alone is unbelievable. Now, do you need all of this stuff? Only you can answer that. You might not need any of these things. Maybe you have absolutely no use for a measuring tool. That's totally possible. So that's off the, the, the table. Maybe you'd never have used a flashlight on your job in your life. Then that's off the table. Maybe you just don't need to write things down. That's off the table. Maybe you don't even need safety glasses. Now, I would love to know though, what do you need at your job? Because oftentimes the, the comment section can become a very valuable place for people to learn more about the jobs that maybe they want to do. Now, old guys like me, you know, I mean, like I you know, started off with stuff like this, maybe I'm completely out of touch and maybe I have a different perspective of somebody who does a completely different job. So please let me know your thoughts and what you carry on a daily basis to work in the comment section below. I think it's gonna help a lot of people. So please, let me know what you think, and I'll catch you guys next time.